go ahead and replace our e-brake shoes. They're located back here behind your brake rotor. Using our 19 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and remove our lug nuts. With the lug nuts removed, go ahead and remove the wheel, set it aside. On the back side of our caliper, we want to go ahead and locate your bleeder screw right here. If yours has a rubber cap on it, simply pop that rubber cap off to expose it. We're going to use a 5 16 wrench, and we just want to open this up. And break that free. And you should see some brake fluid start to seep out of this here. Once we know that that's open. Here comes the fluid. And what we're going to do is just snug this gently. Don't want to make it tight, and we're just going to wipe that down. Using our 14 millimeter socket with our ratchet, we're going to go ahead and loosen and remove the two caliper bolts here. And we're trying to loosen our bolts here. The slide pin here was spinning, so we're gonna use our wrench on the back side here. It's a 14 millimeter. And then we're gonna go ahead and loosen and remove those bolts. Go ahead and repeat for the bottom. Once those are out, you should be able to work the caliper out. Just wiggle that back and forth. You might need a pry tool to go ahead and pop that off. In our case here, we're able to open that up. Now at this point, we're going to go ahead and compress the piston into the caliper. This is why we loosened up the brake bleeder screw earlier. So let's go ahead. We're going to set up our tool here. And what this allows us to do is to compress this piston without forcing any pressure back up into the other braking system here. And as we compress this, we're going to have brake fluid come out of this. So you want to have some rags or a catch can or something there to catch that fluid so it's not running out all over the ground. We're going to squeeze and compress this piston in. Once that piston is seated, go ahead and tighten up your bleeder screw. Give this a wipe down. We're going to remove our tool. Now we're going to use our hanging tool here to go ahead and support our caliper up. We're going to hang that off of our strut spring up top. We just don't want to have additional pressure pulling on our flex hose here. Let's go ahead and remove our inboard and outboard brake pad. And grab that and slide that out of the slider. Do the same for the outside. I want to go ahead and remove our brake caliper bracket here. There's going to be two bolts on the back side. We're going to go ahead and use our 17 millimeter socket and ratchet to go ahead and loosen and remove these. out and then slide your bracket off and we'll set these aside. Now if your particular vehicle has two set screws located here and here holding your rotor on, you don't want to go ahead and use your Phillips head screwdriver to go ahead and loosen and remove those. Ours doesn't have it. I'm just going to go ahead and work our rotor off. 
go ahead and set this aside. On the bottom side of our e-brake shoes here, there's going to be an adjuster wheel with a little star on it. We're going to use our screwdriver and we're going to rotate this so that it screws in on itself, releasing pressure on those brake pads. At this point here, we're going to go ahead and spread the shoes like this here and we're going to pop out our adjuster. And we have our adjuster out here. And the, this side here is threaded, so that's going to go towards the back of the vehicle. This side here will pop right out. And on the bottom side here, right where our adjuster was, there is a spring running externally. We're going to use our spring tool right here. I'm just going to reach up in there and we're going to unhook that. Remove that spring, we're going to set it down just the way it came out. Now on each side of our brake shoes, we're going to have a retaining clip here and a retaining post. What we're going to do is we're going to use a pair of long needle nose pliers. I'm going to try and rotate this a little bit. What we're going to do is push in and rotate. We want to take that clip off of that post. I put my finger on the back side to hold that post, push in and rotate. we're doing is unlocking that clip off of the post. Once it unclips, this is what you're going to have. You want to go ahead and that post or pin will come out through the other side. A little bit of a chore to get it out through the back side here. And to work that post out. Once you have this out, we're gonna go ahead and repeat for the other side. Let's go ahead and remove our two upper springs here. We can use our spring tool here with a notch in it. Once that spring release, then the shoe will come off. We're going to repeat for the rearward shoe. Apply a little bit of pressure there. And slide that off. Just want to remember where that spring came out of. Good work the e-brake actuator here off the shoe. We'll go ahead and set these aside. Now down on the back here is going to be this component here and these little notches here fit into notches on our e-brake shoes. So these fit between both shoes horizontally like so. At this point now that we're all disassembled you want to do an inspection of the brake backing plate and everything behind here, all the metal components, make sure everything is solid. If it is rusty, now is the time to go ahead and replace your backing plate and components. Ours looks pretty good. We're just going to go ahead and clean this. You want to go ahead and take your rearward shoe. We're going to take our e-brake cable actuator here. We're going to work that into the shoe. I'm going to bring this up. What we're going to do next is we're going to take our pin. We're going to go through the caliper bracket or the, the knuckle in the back here. There's a hole. I'm going to feed our post through. I'm going to bring this up in a position. What we want to do is we want to get this post put through and we want to try and get that clip put on the front. It's going to help stabilize the uh, shoe in place. I'm 
I'm going to make sure that that post is locked in. Might take you a couple tries to get it. Okay. Now we have this shoe stabilized. I'm going to go ahead and install the forward shoe. Put our pin in from the back. I'm going to make sure that the notch right here on the top of the shoe fits onto the post over here. I'm going to repeat the same process we did for the other side. Put our spring clip on and install the upper brace here. Thin going towards the front, wide towards the rear. Now that we have that in there, we can go ahead and install our springs. We have our forward spring here. Put that like so. Use our spring tool here. We want to bring it up and over the top of this here. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the rearward upper spring here. This little tab right here goes inside the hole in the brake shoe. Bring this around. Snap that in place. Now the bottom side of that post wants to go into that cross beam that we installed. Compress that together so both of our springs are, are in. Make sure they're over the ears there so they don't pop out. So the whole upper section is installed. Our two lock posts and pins are installed. Let's go ahead and install the lower components. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our adjuster, I'm gonna spin this out. I'm gonna take a little bit of anti seize compound, put that on the threads, and I'm gonna spin that back in. This side here, I'll put a little dab as well. I'm gonna pop that on, I'm gonna work that. I'm gonna make sure the outside of this is all clean because we don't want to get that, we don't want to get that uh, anti seize compound all over the place in there. All right, before we install that, let's go ahead and install our horizontal spring connecting the two bottom parts of the shoe. You can use a pair of needle nose pliers to get in there. Grab that spring, just stretch that over and pop that in. Now what you want to do is install your adjuster. Remember the threaded part faces the rear. Rear portion installed. And we're just going to stretch this open a little bit and we'll get the other half of the adjuster in there. You might put a little bit of upward pressure on that spring we just installed just to make a little bit of room there. Now with everything installed, what we're going to do is just kind of give the shoes a little bump back and forth. And then we're going to go ahead and bring that adjuster out. So we're going to roll that upward. 
what this does is this causes the shoes to expand out. We want to go ahead and put on our brake rotor and we're going to adjust this here. Now when we adjust this here, we want to make sure that the brake shoes or the e-brake shoes come very close to our inside of our brake rotor here. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide this on and we'll kind of give this a little wiggle here. And you can feel that there's excessive play there. So what we do is we continue to rotate this up, causing our e-brake shoes to expand. Give those a bump, settle them in, in place, and then try the rotor again. We do have some more excessive play. So let's go ahead and just keep on working this a little bit. I'm gonna continue this process. And I adjusted them a little bit too far out. If you wanna go ahead and work this rotor off, going to compress these just a little bit. There we go. Rotor fits on, has very minimal amount of play, and rotates nice and smooth. Just going to install your brake caliper bracket. Slide that over. I went ahead and cleaned up our bolts here. Used a wire wheel machine, cleaned up the threads. We'll go ahead and get these bolts started. I'm gonna go ahead and snug these down with my ratchet. Once those are good and hand tight, we're going to go ahead and install our brake pads. On our inboard pad, we're going to put our wear indicator on here. It just lines up and presses onto the side right here. Set our pad in place. Install our outboard pad. Squeeze those in. At this point here, we can release our caliper from our hanging tool. I'm gonna lower this down. Push in our slide pins and work our caliper on. Once that's in place, we're gonna go ahead and install our caliper bolts. I like to thread those in as far as I can by hand. Go ahead and snug those down. I'm going to torque our brake caliper bracket to 58 foot pounds. Torque our brake caliper bolts to 20 foot pounds. And what we're going to do here is we're going to hold the inboard part stationary and tighten the bolt. Do the same for the bottom. Install your rubber boot if you have it on your brake bleeder screw. Go ahead and install your wheel. Go ahead and get all five of these lug nuts started, thread them on a little bit, and we'll go ahead and snug them down. Let's go ahead and torque down our lug nuts to 76 foot pounds.
after you've torqued the wheel, you want to go ahead and hop in the vehicle and you want to go ahead and pump up the brakes because we compress that caliper inside. We want to go ahead and pump up the brakes and get that piston to come back out and actuate on the brakes. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.